Stan Gibalisco here to describe the operation of a somewhat of a relic these days, an old-fashioned audio tape recorder and playback device. You'll still find a few of these around, maybe more than a few, uh, and uh, some of them even have a reel-to-reel -reel arrangement like an old-fashioned movie projector, celluloid movie projector. But it can, uh, a tape recorder of this sort comprises various components. The, the key component is a magnetic tape, which I've shown in red, which uh, is uh, about five millimeters wide in most cases. Uh, you can get it in various thicknesses. Uh, you can get it in cassette form or reel-to-reel -reel form. But the basic idea is that audio impulses are recorded on the tape as varying magnetic, um, magnetizing various, uh, magnetizing the particles on the tape, which are ferromagnetic particles, to a greater or lesser extent as the tape moves by, thereby uh, repeating the waveform or, um, what, am, what is the word I'm looking for? Duplicating or mimicking the waveform of the audio on the tape in the form of magnetic fields of varying densities depending on what was going on in these three heads right here during recording and playback. When you want to record something on this tape, the playback head moves away mechanically from the tape and the erase head and the recording head come into nearly direct contact with the tape. The erase head, as the tape moves by from left to right, gets rid of any pre-existing magnetic impulses on the tape, in case something was recorded on it before, like uh, Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. It erases that so that it's essentially a blank tape when it gets to the recording head, which then records um, your voice, for example, uh, telling the story of... Uh, Oh, Moby Dick. <laughs> You're reading Moby Dick into your microphone. You're going to need a lot of tape for that. It goes through an audio amplifier, produces a signal in a coil and magnet device, a transponder, which is in, in effect an electromagnet that produces a varying magnetic field, magnetizing the particles on the tape. The playback head is moved away so that nothing happens there, and now you've got Moby Dick on your tape. Now when you want to play back Moby Dick, you switch into the playback mode from the record mode. The erase head moves away and the audio amplifier move away mechanically away from the tape and are not activated. But the playback head comes into nearly direct contact with the tape and it has a very sensitive receptor electromagnet which converts to the varying magnetic fields produced by the particles of various magnetic density as they go by, reproducing the waveform if it runs at the correct speed, so it doesn't sound like a speeded up or slowed down version of the story, but like your own natural voice, telling yourself about <clears throat> Moby Dick. Of course, you record in the microphone and you play back through the speaker or, alternatively, a headset. So a magnetic tape recorder and playback device uh, simply produces whatever sound you want on this uh, sort of celluloid-like stuff, uh, about five millimeters wide, sometimes narrower than that in cassette form, and... If you've seen them, you've seen them. You know what they look like. If you haven't seen them, well, <laughs> you don't know how lucky you are to be in the brand new digital age where everything is recorded on digital media, which will be unreadable in 30 or 40 years, thanks to comments made by the vice president of Google, who has told us or warned us about platform incompatibility leading to a digital dark age. So all this stuff, all this yammering I'm doing, all the yammering that everybody did during this 
great enlightened electronics age of ours will be lost forever to the cavemen who dwell on earth in the 27th century AD. They won't even know it's the 27th century. They'll just know that they're hungry and they got to go out and hunt some bear in the forest. Well, it sounds like not a bad life. Wouldn't have to worry about all this stuff. Wouldn't matter anyway. And it'd be a dark age then, too. Because there'd be no recording at all of it. Only the hearsay, the stories, the legends. Like we have from times gone by. Stan Jibalisco, signing off. Until next time. So long.